there's one. Uh, hopefully this is what I'm after today. Finally found one I came up shallow. I've been jigging for a couple hours, haven't been able to find any. Yep, that's my first one of the day. That's a burbot. There we go, on a trout and pouch spoon. So today I'm at Sullivan Lake, which has a pretty large population of burbot. And uh, they don't get big in here, but they're supposedly quite common, although I haven't had much luck this evening until I finally got one on this on this trout and pout spoon that glows in the dark. But I'm going to try and catch a few more for dinner tomorrow. Cool looking fish. This is a burbot, or sometimes called eel pout. People in the Northwest incorrectly call them freshwater ling. Ling cod are actually not the true member of the cod family, but these actually are a true member of the cod family. Cool looking fish. Let's get some more before it gets too dark. So I'm putting some crawfish scent on there, tipping that with some night crawler. This spoon's got some rattles in it, but it also glows in the dark, so I'm gonna charge that up really well. We can't get another. So I've been bit at 55 and I've been bit at 75. Oh, I just had a bite. I missed it. Dang it. There we go. Got him. Got another one. It's a hot bite here now after a sunset. He's a burbot. So I've just been pounding on the bottom and then lifting it just off the bottom and getting them. I barely got him. Get that one out of the net, just in case. It's from the 16 to 20 inches seems to be the average size here. There's another one. Oh, it's a red hot bite now. This will be my third one. Limits five per person. Yeah, oh, this is a little bit bigger one. Probably the biggest one of the night. Look at that one. Yeah! Check that out. That's awesome. There's the big one of the night. Nice glow spoon, still glowing. As soon as it hit the bottom, I had him on. Good looking fish, so cool looking. It's definitely where the slopes jump up. There's another one. <laughs> this is crazy. It's like within minutes of hitting the bottom, it lights out. This one feels like another decent one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Another nice one. Crazy. I wonder what it looks like on camera down there. Must be fish crawling all over. There's another one. Did you get it, sweetie? This one feels kind of small. That's an eater. Nice. That's number five for me tonight. Okay, so here's our burbot haul from last night. So time to start filleting these things so we can have some dinner tonight. Okay, so filleting these things is a little trickier compared to traditional fish. So the, we're gonna get a long fillet off both sides and then we might get a little bit of meat off the belly. The bigger fish, you can definitely get more belly meat harder on these smaller fish. But the first thing we're gonna do is behind the pectoral fin here, we're gonna make a shallow incision that just breaks the skin um, all the way around. So like basically just cutting just below the skin all the way around don't want to cut the head off or anything. Then I like to use fishing pliers with the hook nose on them. And then we're going to start peeling the skin back. 
Now it's good to kind of get it started all the way around, make sure it's getting started in an even manner. It'll come off easier, especially if you want to preserve that belly meat. A lot of times if you just rip from the top, the belly meat will come off too. It's already wanting to do that. It typically does this on the smaller fish more. Okay, so once, and that's why I like having this hook. You just start peeling this stuff back. Got a little bit of belly meat there, unfortunately. Just keep peeling it all the way down. Until it comes off. There we go. So there's the skinless burbot. You can see there's meat here and then down both sides. Now we got to get rid of these long fins. Sometimes you get lucky and those fins will just zipper off if you grab down at the base and pull. Yep, see that? There we go. So there's one fin gone. Make sure you get the little front of the door sold off. Times it won't come off. And they're often the most annoying. It takes a couple grabs. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. And grab. And it's going to come off as a zipper. The front is always a little bit of a problem. Okay, so we removed all the fins and we've got the skin removed now i just need to fillet and this you just fillet like any fish from this point on so i'm going to cut down through the ribs and go along the spinal cord just like you would fillet any other fish and we get these really long beautiful fillets Look how much meat you get off of just a small fish like that. It's pretty incredible. Okay. Got that one. And then on the bottom, there's usually a little bit of belly meat here that you can capture. I just cut right here. Cut there. It's not a lot, especially on small fish. But I got some belly meat there. Some of it tore off with the skin. This is a male. But that'll still make a nice little fried nugget. And you can see there's not much left on that. Really use a lot of meat off of those things. And so here you can see that meat looks really good. Can't wait to eat that tonight. There we go. I had a bite. They're just pulling on the worm. Yeah, it's just a nibble. They're just waking up, you know? There he is, got him. Ooh, that's a big one. Did we get hit? Well, this feels like a heavy one. What's that? Yeah, I know. Whoa, he's actually put up a fight. Look at this. Oh, dude, it's a huge burbot. It's a big one, sweetie. It's a big burbot. Look at the size of that one. Oh, he just came off. Look at that. Just went in the net. That's a huge burbot. There we go. There's a nice size burbot. That's pretty awesome. It's definitely getting these things dialed in. They're really weird. They spawn in the middle of like the winter time under the ice, like in December, January, February. Just a bizarre fish. It seems like the more I pound it on the bottom and kind of just barely lift it off, the more bites I get. Just like three or four times pounded on the bottom and then just very short lifts. Almost dragging it as I drift along here. Just got another big one, but my external battery pack died, so my camera needs to recharge for a bit. Try and get video, but that's still a beautiful fish there. 
There you go, another big fatty. My second big one of the night. Nice. So two big ones, both on the big nasty tackle trout and pout spoon. Tit with night crawler, and then I'm using some uh, lunker lotion crayfish scent. There you go. A bigger one. Just keep pressure on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't go too tight. It's only eight pound test. Keep the pressure on them. Ooh. Big, bigger fish out here tonight. <laughs> Holy shit! I see the line. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Sindra's got a big one on. That's a still a big one. <laughs> That's some. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it it's got gill plates. Yeah. Hang on. Well, don't don't. Here. Okay. Okay, lift him up. Turn him, turn him. That's a big one. <laughs> okay, let me uh, put him in the cooler here. <laughs> the monster. <laughs> Don't, Don't, want it. <laughs> Don't want him jumping out. <laughs> Look how slimy that net is. All right, let's get a few more before it's too late. Definitely not like yesterday, man. I mean, bigger fish average, but uh, far few bright, fewer bites, you know? Not really getting any bites up here, but I haven't gotten any bites in a while, so I don't know. There, oh, I had a good one there. That was a good bite. Dang it. There's a little one. As soon as I hit the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna let it go. You got big ones, you know. You don't need to be greedy. See ya. That was at 45 feet, but this wind sucks. Oh, the Bigger one? Sizable one. Oh, it might be the biggest one. Oh, there were two of them. Oh. There are two of them. There were two of them. One swam up with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a nice one. Good job, sweetie. There's one. Feels small. Might be my last one of the night though. It's 8.25. Yeah, another small one. Throw him back. He's, it's like either dinks or giants tonight. Well, we're quickly running out of time here. They closed the gate here at this... Uh, this lake at 10 p.m. and it seems like the guy who closed the gate kind of shows up well before that. Um, it's been a much better grade of fish this evening, uh, but not as hot a bite. Sidra did pretty good. I think she got six or seven fish, and I've got uh, four or five so far. And I've released a couple dinks, but I kept two really big fish, really large fish, and she got one really big one too. So. Pretty happy with the outcome, especially on the second day. I felt like we got a little bit more dialed in, found a higher grade of fish. That's always a good thing. So, I'll put links to everything that I've used in this video, including the trout and pout spoons from Big Nasty Tackle, uh, my rod reel, and scent, everything that I recommend. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you next time out on the water. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.